Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge, and today we're going to talk about a new function that's actually a macro, but it creates a function called memfn. If we look at the, uh, let's start by looking at the documentation on this. It says expands code that creates a function that expects to be passed an object in any args and calls the named instance method on the object passing the args. Use when you want to treat a Java method as a first class function. Name may be type hinted with a method's receiver type in order to avoid reflective calls. All right. So, uh, let's look at what this expands out to, first of all. Um, let's do something like this, dot, uh, two bytes, macro expand, and I got a bit of a problem there, all right. So what this expands to is something that calls uh, two bytes on the item passed in. So if we did something like this, map, um, foo bar baz, and we wanted wanted to turn each one of these strings into the byte representation. We could do something like this. Ah, it's get bytes in this case. So if we if we do call get bytes on foo, we get a byte array, right? And if we were to call seek on this, we'd see that it actually contains the codes for foo, right? Okay. Now, if we, we might be tempted to go up here and do map get bytes, but if we do that, it says unable to resolve symbol dot get bytes in this context because members are not necessarily first class enclosure. And even if we could do this, um, we would have another problem of reflection, right? Um, so what we can do is do mem fn get bytes, like so. Um, and uh, we do it without the dot in there. And when we call that, we see we get our uh, byte arrays back. Now, the other thing that we uh, would want to do here, perhaps, is uh, type hint this. So we can do something like this string. Uh, first of all, let's, let's see what, what problem we have with reflection here. So if we set warn on reflection true and call that and call this, we get this reflection warning that says there is a, there's reflection going on. Um, it doesn't know what method on what class get bytes refers to. But however, if we do this string, then that reflection warning goes away and it works as expected. Okay, now the other thing that we might wanna consider here is uh, let's look at what happens if we expand this out, like so we have um, the target comes in and then we have additional parameters. So we might want to do get bytes one, two. And if we pass that in, it adds additional args that um, are, don't necessarily work the way you would think. So what we do here is, is as you see, it's actually passing in here um, it, it would be assigning the name. This this one I actually compile because we have a symbol being assigned to an integer. We might be tempted to call something like one, two, and three here, uh, right? But that's not exactly the way it works. We aren't passing these in. This is giving names to the method. So X, Y, and Z in this case, right? Now, uh, why do we want to do this? Why would we want to allow people to define the symbol names? Well, this would be perhaps if we want to type hint those names as well. Um, long and int, or something like that, right? So now, if we were to fully expand this, um, you can't see it here, but these would actually have the, um, the metadata for type hinting long and int on the names and that would work as, as expected. All right, so um, that is method fn. Uh, well, there's one more thing that we should look at here with this function, and that is it does create recreate the function every single time. So if we did it like this, we might actually end up with a little bit of allocation happening. Um, so if we were going to call this many times, we might want to do something like get bytes is memfn dot get bytes um, uh, 
let's see, def, here we go. So now we have a function called get bytes, and we just say get bytes. And run that. I keep wanting to put the period in there. Um, there's no period. So we have get bytes, and then that works just like we'd expect. That's the examples for today. Uh, member fn, mem fn. Um, I haven't seen it used a whole lot, uh, but it may come in useful if you're doing a lot of interop and you want to just create a instance of a function that you can pass around that's first class and yet refers to a member on a specific class. Um, so uh, that's the example for today. Thank you for watching.